Uh, hi everyone, I'm Zach uh, with, with HKN. Um, so today we're going to talk about, well, we're going to start making some videos about probability in general, um, stochastic processes maybe. But I um, figured I'd start here with just a, it, um, it's, a, it's a somewhat simple probability problem, but it's really, really actually very important. Um, something called Bayes theorem, or you might, might hear it called Bayes rule. Um, and you've probably seen it before. Um, this is the formula for it. And, um, and so that, let's just say what it says. This is, says the probability of event A given event B is equal to the probability of event B given A times the probability of event A divided by the probability of event B. So that sounds nice, but like how, how could we use it? Um, why is it useful? Um, so let's let's set up a problem um, that just kind of lends itself to, to this. Um, so let's say we have, we, we have two um, indistinguishable die, even though they might be sort of distinguishable in my drawing. Let's just say they're sitting on the table, they're both the same color, um, and you know that one of them is fair and one of them is not fair. Now, what do we mean by fair and not fair? Let's say, um, so in orange, we'll put, so for a fair die, right, the probability of rolling a num any number i um, is equal to, well, how many, how many sides are there on a die? There's six sides, right? So the probability of, of rolling any particular side on a fair die should be 1 in 6 for, for i, i equals 1 to 6, right? Um, so that's how we'll model our fair die. Now, um, let's say we know that we don't know which of these die is the, um, the weighted or, or not fair die. But let's say, let's say we know that on the, on the weighted die, the probability of rolling 1, let's say, is equal to 1 half. Um, and then the probability of rolling um, i, all the other values, is equal to 1 over 10. Um, this would be for i equals 2 up to 6. So, so does that make sense? Like on this unfair die, the, the 1 comes up half the time and all the other, you know, all the other um, values come up way less often. So, um, so we know this about our die, but we don't know which one's which. Now we're going to say, um, let's, let's pick one of these die at random, um, either one, um, and we will do some testing with it, right? It would make sense to even just, you know, kind of um, intuitively that if we wanted to tell which one of these was um, the unfair die, that we'd just toss one of them a few times, see what happens. So um, let's, let's define our events um, A and B. Um, and a lot of these problems are about being clever with the way we pick our events. So let's call A, let's say, a is um, the event um, you pick up the you picked up the fair die. So that's our event A. Um, actually, and let's let's make one more note here. Um, so let's say we picked up a die and then we tossed it, um, let's say, eight times. And let's see, just so I agree with my earlier work. Let's say we get the sequence when we toss. We get the sequence um, one. Uh, let me just look at what I wrote. One, three, four, one. Two, one, one, five. So we toss it eight times, and we get that sequence. Now, right away, we see there's there's a good bit of ones in there. We know that one of our die is is skewed towards rolling one. So just you know, just intuitively, we could say, oh, this is probably the unfair die. There's still a probability that we picked up the fair die, and we want to know what that is, right? So, so this is our event A. And let's call our event B the, the rolling of, or the, 
the probability or the event that we get this sequence with, with any die, right? Um, so we'll call B um, the event um, we get sequence S. Okay. So now, um, so now let's see if this can be solved with Bayes' rule. So what would this say? The probability that we picked up the fair die given that we roll this sequence, that's what we want to know, um, is equal to all this. So let's try to figure out what these terms, what all these terms are, um, would be in this case. So let's start out with the easy ones. What's the probability of event A? Um, let's see what event A is. Probability of event A is you picked up the fair die. Um, the, uh, so what did we say? We said we pick up one of these die at random, one of these dice at random, right? Which means that you're equally likely to pick up one or the other. So the probability of picking up the fair die, probability of A is equal to one half, right? There's a 50% chance you picked up the fair die without knowing anything else. Um, so let's see, now the probability of, um, let's do the probability of B. Probability of B is going to be a little bit tricky, but probability of B is the probability of getting this sequence with either the fair die or the unfair die, right? We have to, the, the total event probability would be not knowing which, which die we have, what's the probability of this happening, um, what's the total probability of that sequence happening. So. Um, actually, one little side note here. We're assuming, and it's a good assumption, that um, dice tosses are independent, right? Um, the number you toss right now doesn't depend on any of the numbers you tossed before. So when we assume independence, we can, for a sequence of tosses, we can just multiply those tosses' probabilities all together to get the total probability. So let's think of the probability of event B. Now, how can, how can B happen? Either we can pick up the fair die and proceed to roll this, or we could have picked up the unfair die and proceeded to roll this. So in probability, um, when we, it, those events are mutually exclusive too, right? Um, picking up the fair die and picking up the unfair die. If you do one, the other isn't going to happen. So when we have a setup like that, um, in probability, we hear, hear the word or, we can add. And when we hear the word and, we can multiply. That's, nah, that's not exactly right, but it's, a, it's good when you have independent and mutually exclusive events. So let's see. So let's first say the probability of picking up the fair die and rolling that. So the probability of picking up the fair die is the other half, right? Um, let's say, let's, we'll denote um, things that have to do with the fair die in orange and we'll um, make things that have to do with the unfair die in blue. So we have a, a, a half, a probability of one half of picking up the fair die. And then we would have to roll this sequence with the fair die for event B, right? So um, the fair die, by definition, has a probability of one sixth um, for throwing any number, right? And we said they're independent. So we would have a probability of one sixth and one sixth and one sixth and one sixth and one sixth. So we could just multiply one sixth together, however many times we have. What do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the probability of this sequence with a fair die is one over six um, multiplied by itself eight times, or to the power of eight. Um, okay, so that's the probability of B if we pick the fair pick the fair die. Now we have to say, or, or we could have picked the weighted die. So the probability of picking the weighted die, again, is one half, right? And we proceed to roll this sequence. So um, what is the probability of this sequence if we have the weighted die? Now we see um, the probability of tossing ones is a half probability of tossing um, any other number is one tenth. So here we have one, two, three, four ones, right? So the probability with the uh, unfair die of that would be 
one half and one half and one half and one half, or one half to the power of four. And we rolled these other numbers here. We have one, two, three, four numbers that aren't one. So those would, re would have probability one in 10, right? Because that's the probability of any other number. Again, to the power of four, because there's four of those. So this is the probability of the total event, um, the probability of this sequence happening either way. Does that make sense? Um, OK, and finally, we want probability of B given A. Um, now, what is that? Let's, let's say that in words. Probability we get sequence S um, given that, given that we have picked up the fair die. Um, so we actually, here, let's write that here. Probability of B given A. Um, okay, and we actually mm, we've we've come up with that already um, in this part right here. So the the probability of getting the sequence given that we've picked up the fair die is well, it's a little tricky to see. So here we we didn't know which die we picked up, right? But the probability of this sequence with a fair die is just um, not, okay. That doesn't work in this setup here. Forget the one halves there, right? The probability of this sequence, given that we have a fair die, is just one over six to the power of eight, right? If we know the die, if we knew the die was fair, it would just be you know equal probability eight times. So the probability of B given A is one over six to the power of eight. Um, and you know, these, these are both of these are pretty small numbers. I did them on a calculator, um, but you know, without you know, what, without even writing down the values of these numbers, just um, you can double check. Just believe me, I typed it into a calculator. Um, we will do Bayes' formula, and remember what this is going to spit out. This is going to spit out the probability that we've picked up the fair die, the probability that you're holding the fair die, given that you just tossed this sequence. Um, so when we do all the math, we get that the probability of A given B is equal to uh, 0 0.04546. And so it's really it's not looking good for, for the fair die, right? But um, this is saying that there's still a chance. There's, um, uh, we could say this is a what, like 4.5% chance that we are actually holding the fair die and got this, re got this um, sequence with it. Um, so if we, you know, yeah, this is, um, probability is interesting like this. If we had kept going, you know, like this, is, uh, this, this uncertainty here is accounting for, you know, maybe, maybe we're holding the fair die to just happen to roll a bunch of ones in that short sequence. You know, if we had kept, if we kept going with the sequence and we started seeing less ones, this probability would begin um, would begin uh, becoming more reasonable. Um, so let's see. Yeah. So this is this this um, can be extended to um, work with um, continuous random variable distributions. It's it's very useful. It's used ex extensively. So yeah. So the idea is that we can we can get some kind of information by making an observation. Um, we could think of this as an observation, and we've kind of um, extrapolated some information from that. So, uh, so yeah, that's that. Thanks for watching.